Whoa. Let's sharpen some knives. In this video, I'm going to be setting up and using this eight inch wet sharpener from Rikon. I wanna use it to sharpen some of our kitchen knives as well as a good solution for my chisels and plain blades. Let's open this puppy up. This system comes with a lot of stuff. It has a grinding wheel, it has a strop wheel, and it has a guide bar that you can put in multiple locations and it will run in either direction. It also comes with a jig to hold your chisels and plane blades and a jig to set the angle that you need for your knives or your chisels. The setup is pretty easy. It's one wrench and that's pretty much it. It's got a nylon lock nut and you just tighten that thing down while holding some pressure against it on the wheel and you're ready to go. As soon as I put the wheel on and turned on the machine, I noticed a good bit of wobble on this stone. I don't have any reference to know if this is normal with this machine or not. I've got some more information I'll tell you a little bit later in the video, so keep watching for that. They state to never use this without water because it is a wet sharpener. So one of the first things to do was fill up the reservoir just below the V-notch and then proceed to spill water everywhere. It's okay. I think they said to do that in the manual. It's pretty simple. There are a couple slots and a couple of hangers on the actual reservoir that just slot in there and then gravity helps hold it on. This wheel is thirsty the first time you use it, so after you fill it up and let it sit for a little bit or even run it, it's going to need you to top it off. So a few things to note here. You need these spacers. Do not get rid of them. So what you want to do is put your chisel in here. Whoops. and get it set how you think it looks right. Just tighten it a little bit and put this on the bar. I'm way too high. So loosen these. Then you wanna just kinda eyeball what is straight. The problem I've found is even when I used a square on here to show that, I mean, even that's really square. It doesn't look like the wheel is square to this tool, not perfectly, because I did a few other chisels and you come out with a slight angle, which doesn't really matter. Uh, Cause if you hand, if you hand sharpen them, they could do that anyway. Uh, I'm going to do this at 30 degrees. So what you do is you put this on here and you look, until both sit flat. Your chisel sits flat and the gauge are sitting flat right here on your chisel. So this is tight and locked in. This is tight and locked in. And let's just grind. Go nice and slow. Try to cover the whole part of the stone so you don't wear one part of it out. I'm trying to establish a new face on this chisel because it's been a while since I've done that. So before you ever remove the chisel from your jig, once you get it set, you want to do all that you're going to do before you change that because it will change the angle at which you're doing it. You're never going to get it back 
exactly the same. So that's why I'm kind of awkwardly letting it hang and me just looking at the underside of it like I am because I don't want to move where it is in this jig. Yep, I can feel that burr on the back side of it. This grinder can go either direction, which is pretty cool. And I was wondering, since I haven't done a ton of sharpening with a whetstone, uh, if there's a use case for when you'd want the stone turning toward your tool or away from your tool. Come to find out, it's mostly if you're trying to do really quick material uh, removal, you want it to be coming toward your tool. Um, especially for rough things like axes and, and bigger things like that. Most often, especially if you already have a pretty good edge on your blades or your chisels, you're going to want the tool to turn like this, kind of with, uh, I'm sorry, the, the stone to turn kind of with your tool so that it's only grazing off of the bottom like this and uh, kind of rolling over a nice burr that you can take care of later. So just a quick thing I'm actually... I've, I've done this one a little bit already, so it's just about ready. I'm gonna grind it a little bit more and then we'll go to the strop. Once you are done grinding and you're sure that you're done, you can go ahead and remove this tool. You could leave it there also. And loosen these to get your chisel out, out of the jig. Okay, so there's a pretty decent burr on this backside and uh, a nice edge there. So we're gonna go over to the strop. In some experiments, uh, they send with this grinder a tube of who knows what it is, uh, compound for using on the strop. They instruct you to oil the leather first, not till it's dripping or anything, but just so it's coated. I happen to use some three-in-one oil because I saw some other sharpening guys online were doing that just to treat it a little bit. And then I was starting to use this, but I felt like I was getting better results out of some of this um, strop compound that I already had, this green stuff. So I've coated um, it all over here and I'll add some more and then we'll take care of this. When I was talking about the direction you can go, you definitely wanna go this way away from you with the strop because you don't want to come toward you with the chisel and catch into your strop, you'll ruin it. So we're gonna take care of this burr first on the back, just placing it on here. You can actually see right there, it kind of rolled over. We're just gonna keep doing this till we can get rid of it. Polish that back edge. Yep, that burr is gone. Polish this edge. Now I want to do the old paper test. Let's see how it cuts. Pretty good. I'd say that's cutting pretty well. To me, that's good enough because I can get back to working on whatever. And it's slicing pretty clean. So I think that's good enough. I wanted to also try it on some ingrain wood. So this is maple. Now that I'm familiar with the grinder, let's move on to some knives. I don't know if you can see just how bad that edge is. It's really jagged and dull. This is one of our steak knives. I've done some experiments with, the, with sharpening knives off camera, so I'm gonna show you that now. This is the Tormek uh, KJ45 centering knife jig. 
And I got this one because the quality just looked a little bit better than some of the off-brand ones. It's very simple. You put your knife in here, basically centered is what it says, and trying to do it, you know, with the, the face of this, uh, basically parallel to your edge. Uh, tighten down the silver one till it's tight. Oh, it slipped. Let that one pinch. And then this one acts as a counter lever. So as you screw it in, it actually spreads apart here and clamps here. So then you just kind of use that as an, an even better clamp for it to be together. Then it's in there. Then uh, you got to find the, the angle of, see how this is way too low where I was doing the chisels. Um, because that jig was so much higher. So I've got to readjust all of this. So let me get that going and I'll show you. You have to kind of move it around multiple different ways. Um, you can use either of these on the bar. So this would be for larger knives like this, so you don't need as much room. But for smaller knives, you use the, the larger one. You put it on the stone and then use that same gauge. Um, so typically knives like this are about 40 degrees, but you have to cut that in half because there's a bevel on both sides. So you'll want to do 20 degrees on this side, flip it 20 degrees on the other side. So we're going to use this 20 degree measurement here and get this pretty close. And that's looking really good. I've already got it set. Um, so let's grind to a test on this before we even run it, this same knife. I can't even get it to grab. It will not cut. Try to hold as steady pressure as you can. Like I showed earlier, these knives were in really bad shape. I had to do a lot of grinding on them just to get past some of those burrs that they had and, and the jagged edge. But going forward, once I put a good edge on them, I don't think it'll take much to just touch these up. don't really feel that jaggedness that was in it earlier. So that's good. I've had pretty good success just removing it from this jig and uh, doing the strop part by hand because it's a little more forgiving with that leather. So I'm gonna charge it up with a little more of this stuff. And then just hone this edge. Just feeling for a burr. Doesn't feel like there's one left, so that should mean that it will cut pretty well. Now you can see a much more polished edge if I can get it in focus. There we go. It's looking a lot better. Cut the paper and see how it goes. Uh, might need a little more work. Cutting pretty good. I'd say that's way better than it was because it wouldn't even slice before. Got a little close to my hand on that one. I'm happy with that. So just to show again, here's one that has tons of gouges and I have not sharpened yet. It's struggling. <laughs> I can't even get it to grab. Eh, it's pretty jagged. And here's one I just finished. They're not perfect. But it's cutting a whole lot better than the other ones.
pretty good. Okay, so let me tell you what I like and don't like about this setup. I like the price. Uh, it was about $165. That's not bad. Um, overall, the machine is pretty quiet and this Tormac jig worked really well with it for the knives. Um, it does take a little practice. I'm finally getting a little bit better at it now that I've done five or six or seven knives. Uh, but I've done all my chisels and I'm pretty pleased with how that's gonna go. Hopefully it'll make my process for sharpening my chisels much faster. Some of the things I did not like, uh, they sent this tube of polishing compound. It was already like half empty by the time I opened it. That wasn't great. And I didn't feel like it did a really great job anyway when I was first using it. I just, it was not polishing up very well. I happen to have some of this green polishing compound that I always used on my strops with my chisels and that seemed to work pretty well. Um, the other thing I didn't like is the, the run out that this machine had. It wobbles quite a bit. And I don't know if that's typical for this machine because it's a little cheaper price point. A friend of mine has one, the Rikon, and his wobbles a little bit also. Maybe that's standard with all of these. I don't have a Tormek, so I don't know if that would be the same with a Tormek. Maybe that's what you're paying for for that higher price point is a, just a really fine machine that doesn't wobble and the stone doesn't move. I don't know. Um, I'm pretty good with the, the cuts and the polish I'm getting on the paper for these knives and the chisels. They are sharper than they have been for sure, and I'm pleased with it. I'm not gonna take it any higher than that, but I have seen that they make a stone grater, so you can basically, it's got uh, a grit on each side, and you basically put it on here while this thing's moving, and it creates a rougher stone that then you can do all your roughing with. Then you flip it over, and it, it makes it a much finer surface and polishes it up obviously better so that then when you take it to the strop, um, you get an even higher polish. Hey, it's been a few weeks since I recorded all that video and I just wanted to put a quick update in here. I was not happy with the wobble in that wheel. It's part of what I was talking about in that previous clip that I didn't like about this machine. So I reached out to Rikon, their customer service was really good. We did some troubleshooting and they actually sent me another stone wheel. This one is much better much more true, it just runs better, and I'm quite happy with it. So I just wanted to put that update in here because they did make it right. There are a lot of sharpening methods out there. You can do the scary sharp method and, and just take this to whatever level you want to. Uh, I have found that this is good enough for me. I'm gonna enjoy being able to touch up all my tools really quickly. I'd love to know your comments. If this answers some of your questions, let me know. Drop me a comment below. Um, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.